In this lesson, we will discuss additional useful tools in DaVinci Resolve. Some of them are not available in the light version, so in order to make use of them, you will need the full DaVinci Resolve version. Say we'd like to create a larger space in this clip, that is, we'd like to blur the part of the shot closer to the camera. We can do so in the Blur panel. The panel offers three tools, that is, Blur, Sharpen and Mist. In fact, all three have an identical basic parameter, Radius. Here we'll use Blur. I'll create a new node. Now we activate the linear window and move it into the lower part of the image, where I extend it across the full width. The best spatial effect is achieved when blur is strong at the bottom edge and gradually diminishes in the upward direction in the image. In the previous lesson, when discussing window masks, we worked with softness, which we can use here again. We set the linear window and softness so that it begins at the bottom parts of the image and stops in the area where we don't wish for any image blurring to occur that is, where Blur equals zero. We return to the Blur panel and set the required value. In this clip, a wide-angle camera lens was used, so we should use only low blur parameter values. The radius controller works in such a way that for number 0 0.5, the blur value is zero. Increasing radius, the blur value grows as well. As I mentioned earlier, the same radius parameter is available for Sharpen and Mist. If we lower the radius value to below 0.5, the blur value becomes negative, which means that the image begins to sharpen. Even though we're able to sharpen the image using blur, I suggest switching to Sharpen. Here, two additional settings, Coring Softness and Level, can be activated. Using them, we are able to better fine-tune the overall image sharpness. With the Level parameter, we are able to better determine the threshold, that is, the limit within the picture from which sharpening is applied. And with Coring Softness, we determine the limit for fine-tuning. To fine-tune the sharpness, we therefore lower radius below 0.5. The manufacturer describes the mist effect as Vaseline in front of the lens, that is a certain type of blur. Noise reduction is yet another effective tool. DaVinci Resolve offers two forms of reduction, temporal noise reduction and spatial noise reduction. You should always begin with the temporal noise reduction tool, which uses a more complex and therefore more powerful algorithm for the removal of unwanted image noise. The algorithm is able to evaluate several consecutive frames, obtaining a better sample of the noise that should be removed. In terms of configuration, there is no single correct reduction setting applicable to all clips. The parameters need to be set separately for each clip type. For example, for stationary or slowly moving objects, we can set up to two frames from which the average noise reduction value is calculated. If, however, we're working with fast and dynamic clips, we should lower the setting to a single frame in order to avoid image errors. Whether we're working with fast or slow shots can also be determined here. In the item above, we set the accuracy, in other words, the calculation speed. A better result is often achieved when we denoise the color or chroma component separately 
by a value that is different from the luminance value. The human eye is actually more sensitive to changes in brightness than in color, and so the image luminance should be skewed as little as possible. Moreover, luminance noise looks much more natural and resembles film material, while chroma component noise suggests a rather lower quality or low exposure digital camera. I personally always denoise the chroma component of a video signal more aggressively. If we don't achieve a good result using temporal noise reduction, we turn to spatial noise reduction. This tool reduces image noise across the board. Both these DaVinci Resolve reductions are considered high quality tools that seek to minimally refine an image while preserving as much image detail as possible. Nearly every post-production software manufacturer offers the use of various plugin modules with their system. Blackmagic Design opted for the OFX platform. Using this icon, we call up the plugin window and see the two items in it. Library and Settings. In the library, all OFX plugins we have installed for DaVinci can be found. Let's choose Sapphire Lens Flare, for instance. A plugin is applied by moving the mouse to a node. Next, under Settings, we adjust the effect as desired. An FX indicator appears under the node, signaling that an effect is used. Most effects are accelerated by the graphics card, so the calculation will not significantly slow down our work. Let's return to the edit panel for a moment, and in the effects library find the option to create titles. A title is added to the shot by dragging it into the timeline with the mouse. Next, we can adjust the font, color, text size, as well as other parameters such as shadow. Text can be edited within this field. Subsequently, we work with text as with any other clip. We can shorten it to a desired length and also add a transition, for example, cross dissolve. If we wish to add a classic text scroll at the end of our project, we can use this preset. I'll add the text and center it. As you can see, much of post-production work can be done directly in DaVinci Resolve. When grading, the shot composition is often fine-tuned as well. We have used the sizing window in the color panel a couple of times before. In it, we have adjusted the zoom. Obviously, other adjustments can be made in this window. We can move the image in any direction, in other words, fine-tune our composition. If our material is in higher resolution, say Ultra HD, and the resulting format will be HD 1080, we don't need to worry much about image degradation. However, the output format does not always need to be 16x9. If we wish to create a more film-like feel, we can use blanking and compose the shot in a different aspect ratio. We switch to output sizing. And adjust the top and bottom values for the shot.
This way, we are able to crop the image to a more film-like ratio, 2.35 by 1. If we don't want to use such a sharp edge, we can further enable the smooth parameter. By switching into the output sizing mode, we have created blanking for our entire timeline. In this lesson, we discussed additional useful tools in DaVinci Resolve, such as Blur, Sharpen and Denoise, showed how to activate OFX plugins and how to work with text and with the sizing window.